Now that's a way to silence the haters and start a season. Welcome back, Habs fans, to this week's episode of Habs Hockey Report right here on the All Habs Hockey Magazine YouTube channel. We're part of Rocket Sports Media. You can check us out at our website, allhabs.net. Also follow us on Twitter at All Habs, where we have all the latest Montreal Canadiens news for you. And if you head to allhabs.net, game day previews, full game recaps, because guess what? The regular season has started, folks, and uh, we're happy to have you along for the ride. My name is Amy Johnson. I am the host of the show every week here at Habs Hockey Report. I'm also the lead correspondent over at our Laval Rocket-focused site. Habs Prospects is what we cover there. That's at ahlreport.com, and uh, I'll be kicking off coverage with my colleague Chris G uh, over at ahlreport.com this weekend when the Laval Rocket get their season started. We're going to talk about that a little bit today, but we are glad that you're here with us. If you haven't done so already, just take a second to tap that subscribe button and notification bell. The season has started. We are well on our way. There's a lot of excitement uh, built up this week for sure, and we don't want you to miss an episode. Also, drop us a note in the comments if you're a new viewer and let us know where you're watching from. Uh, Habs fans are all over the world. We'd love to hear where you are watching from at home. And uh, we've got a lot to cover today, that is for sure. We're going to talk about that season opening win on home ice against the Leafs. Wow, what a way to start the season. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, a couple of things surrounding Carey Price. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some fun NHL things that came out this week. And uh, we're going to talk about the Laval Rocket as well, because as I said, they're starting their regular season this week. We've got some news coming from down there. And of course, what would a Habs Hockey Report episode be without fan interaction hearing from you? Uh, we love to hear from you. We've been getting so many wonderful comments from you. So many people telling us how much they love the show. Tons of new subscribers. Welcome to all of you. We're glad that you're here. And uh, we can't wait to bring you along on this uh, on this ride and this journey here with us at, at Habs Hockey Report this season. It's going to be a lot of fun, so let's not waste a minute. Let's get started. Now I'm going to kick off this week's Habs Happenings with... Throwing out the uh, feedback form question of the week for you right away. If you're new here, the feedback form question is a question that I will pose to you, the viewer, you, the Habs fan, each and every week. I want you to answer it down in the comments section below. And then when you come back and watch next week's episode, I will likely read and react to your comment and your answer to the question as well as everyone else's. Uh, and it's a, it's a great way to have your voice heard in the Habs community. And it's very fun just to see where Habs fans stand on a bunch of different things. And why am I starting this segment with the feedback forum question? Well, because it, uh, it, it's, it has to do with things that happen before hockey. Pre-game rituals, superstitions, game day meals, all of that stuff was back in play on Wednesday night for the players, and I bet for the fans as well. What is your game day routine? Do you have a superstition for when you watch Habs games that you have to do each and every game? Or maybe you have a favorite place that you like to watch the game. Or maybe you have a uh, a favorite food or beverage that you have to have for your perfect game viewing night. Whatever that is, whatever your game day ritual is, tell us about it. Tell us that down below in the comments. I can't wait to hear. We're going to tell everybody about it next week on the show. That's for sure. But yeah, you know, uh, it was an exciting day building up to that home opener. Habs, Leafs, you can't beat that on opening night. Uh, the Bell Center was, you could just 
even watching on TV, you could feel the excitement just oozing through. In fact, some of our longtime friends, uh, readers at allhabs.net, listeners to our podcasts and uh, viewers right here on the show, uh, the Gallant family happened to be at the Bell Center last night, and they remembered a very important fan interaction uh, segment here on Habs Hockey Report, and that's the Show Your Hab segment. You've seen that hashtag going down uh, under underneath at the bottom of the screen here. Well, you see that uh, this uh, this tweet was posted as they were getting set for warm-ups, arriving at the Bell Center with hashtag Show Your Habs. Looking great, gents. Uh, looking looking like you're about to have uh, a lot of fun. I'm hoping and and I'm sure it was a memorable night for you. So glad that you were there and great to see some fans out enjoying uh, the season opener for the Montreal Canadiens. And that's a call to all of you. If you post a picture that is Canadians or Habs related in any way on Twitter or Facebook, Use the hashtag show your Habs, just like the Gallants did, and uh, we'll be sure to feature your photo right here on the show. Uh, so it was, you know, fans were buzzing, lots of, you know, red carpet things and lots going on at the Bell Center. Uh, and of course, as the Canadians always do, uh, had a had a wonderful opening night ceremony, introducing everyone, lots of big uh, applauses and cheers, but none compared to the ovation that Carey Price received when he walked out looking dapper as always in his cowboy hat and in his kind of western inspired suit uh and really Carey Price stood there and and just soaked it all in um you know kind of really took it in my favorite he, the the crowd went wild for him ch- chanting his name um is very poignant. You could see that it meant a lot to Carey Price uh, because we don't know what his future is is going to hold. In fact, Kent Hughes telling the media yesterday uh, before the game that Carey will likely meet with the media next week. And that is also probably because uh, some news came out in an exclusive interview that Carey did with uh, the Athletics' Arpin Basu this week uh, that he is contemplating a surgical procedure which he he details it in this interview with the athletic that there's a there's a hole in the bone and cartilage in his knee and so the proposed procedure is to basically take some bone and cartilage from a a lower wear portion of his knee and insert it into that hole. And so as Carrie says in the interview, it's obviously a very invasive procedure. So it would be a tough surgery. It would be a long rehab. And there is still no guarantee that he'd be able to play after that. Uh, So he's trying to really uh, weigh all of the options, weigh the best quality of life because he still wants to be pain-free day to day. He wants to be able to play with his children and obviously we can all understand that. So, but he's also said, but I still feel like I have more hockey in me too. So we'll see what Carey Price has to say when when he meets with the media next week, what his decision is going to be. And hopefully we'll have a bit of, of an outlook of what that decision would mean for him if it is a surgical route, you know, what the, what the recovery time is and what the likelihood or possibility of him playing uh, playing again would be, but he is beloved by the fans in Montreal, as you could see with his ovation at the Bell at the Bell Center, and it was just a it was just a really wonderful thing to see. A night of memories continued then as three new players on the Canadiens roster got to share their rookie lap together: Uri Slavkovsky, Caden Gooley, Arbor Jacki, getting to uh, ditching the buckets for their for their shared rookie lap uh, and getting out there. Big smiles all around. You could see how much. It meant to them. Uh, it was a big night for for those three. Uh, Jordan Harris, of course, also making the opening night roster. But remember, he's already played. Uh, he's already made his NHL debut at the end of last season, so he wasn't. In, he's already had his his rookie lap. Uh, but pretty exciting to see the scratches for this night were Michael Pozzetta and Jonathan Drouin. I think those were uh, absolutely warranted, and it was an exciting game. You know, um, Toronto struggled in some areas. The Canadians struggled in some areas, but the Canadians were able to keep up. Every time Toronto scored, the Canadians were able to come right back. And, you know, then it got very interesting, of course, when the Canadians went up. And that was like, wow. I mean, the Bell Center just absolutely erupted. Uh, And, of course, 
as luck would have it. <laughs> uh, Toronto evening things up and then Josh Anderson coming in with the clutch goal uh, to to take the win just seconds before uh, the, the final horn. Uh, really exciting. Cole Caulfield with two goals on the night. If you haven't uh, checked out last Saturday's episode of the Canadians Connection podcast here at Rocket Sports, uh, I go to canadiansconnection.fm or just click the link at the at the top of the screen. And I was happy to join hosts Rick Stevens and Michael Spinella uh, in the second segment where we uh, did kind of a rapid fire uh, list of questions for the season, predictions for the season. And um, hmm, I had an, in- I, my, uh, my prediction for Cole Caulfield and his goal scoring capabilities for this season was a little different than my two colleagues, Rick and Michael. And uh, I think I'll be reminding them of it quite often <laughs> throughout this season. But if you missed it, it was a really fun episode. And, and yes, the three of us laid out our predictions for the season. And at the end of the season, we're going to kind of go back and see how we fared. So check that out at the link above. That's for sure. But it's exciting to see Cole Caulfield notch, not his first, but also his second goal of the season in the opener. We know how much he struggled last year. Uh, Cole Caulfield looks like he's uh, looks like he's primed to put up some big numbers this year. So that's uh, that's very exciting for people to see. A few other new faces: Kirby Doc, of course, uh, making his Montreal Canadiens debut. Sean Monahan making his Canadiens debut and scoring a goal. Do you? That was such a big moment for Sean Monahan. All of the rehab that he's gone through to get healthy again, the ups and downs that he went through when he was in Calgary to come out and score a goal uh, in his first game wearing the CH was a big deal for Sean Monahan, and hopefully that gives him uh, just the right boost that he needs to really get this new path of his with the Montreal Canadiens started on the right foot. So congratulations to Sean Monahan on that. Uh, very fun. Also, uh, we saw. Jonathan Kovacevic, or Johnny Kovacevic, as he goes by now. Uh, wa- recent waiver claim pickup by the Montreal Canadiens. And he actually played a pretty decent game. Uh, this That was only his fifth career NHL game. Uh, he also, in the Winnipeg organization, he was highly relied upon in the AHL for the Manitoba Moose. Uh, but just different circumstances, injuries, uh, depth chart, managerial decisions, that kind of thing had prevented him from really getting a lot of looks at the NHL level. Um, If you would like to learn a little bit more about Kovacevic, what kind of player he is, what his outlook is, uh, his upside, those kinds of things, then I also recommend that in the links above, check out uh, the most recent episode of the Press Zone podcast, which is our AHL and Laval-related podcast hosted by myself uh, and Rick Stevens. and that's at thepresszone.fm. And this past week, uh, our good friend and colleague Patrick Williams joined us to help us learn everything there is to know about Johnny Kovacevic and, and what he can bring to the Montreal Canadiens lineup and why this waiver claim and the the forced stint in the NHL that comes with it for at least a month uh, could be just what he needs to, to really take his game to a new level. So I highly recommend you check that out. It is going to be uh, an exciting season. We know, we know we've tempered expectations, right? We know that we're not really expecting the Canadians to make the playoffs. We're not expecting wins on most nights, probably. But what we saw on Wednesday night was guys having fun, young players adapting, young players getting opportunities, young players succeeding. And if we see a lot more of that as we continue on through the season, then this might be a very successful season for the Montreal Canadiens and just ignore the win-loss column and just watch what's happening to the development of the players on the ice, young and old. Very exciting. Three more games coming up this weekend, uh, and it's uh, it's going to be fun. So keep it locked at allhabs.net, at allhabs on Twitter. One other fun thing, NHL-related before we go, the NHL did a couple of new things this week. The first was the introduction of the dynamic board ads. If you were watching at home, you noticed that now there is a singular advertisement superimposed on the rink boards on the national broadcasts, um, as opposed to the actual bo- ads that are on the boards in the rink that players and spectators in the building see. Um I'm here to say I hate them. (laughs) 
I don't like them at all. Um, it's just, you know, A, some of them have animation and that's distracting. Like, seriously, I don't need to see a, a car driving around the boards in the middle of a game. Like, it's just distracting. Uh, secondly, uh, the technology isn't there yet that it also carries through on replays or on um, close-up shots. And so your, const your eye is constantly going back and forth between this clean look singular ad that that circles the rink to the actual boards with you know I don't, rubber marks from pucks and and things like that that make a rink look like a hockey rink um and and look like boards in a hockey game so it's a little t i mean the technology is outrageous like i'm i'm super impressed by the by the technology but i don't love the look of it it's a little distracting and yeah like it's just it's too pristine for, for hockey boards. Didn't love that. What I do love, however, check this out. Like, okay, they say that this has been years in the making, but would you look at this thing? Could they make an adult size of this? Because I, I don't think that I would fit on this, but I need one of these. First electric Zamboni toy vehicle comes with a complete a uh, sticker package for all 32 teams and the NHL Shield so you can customize it however you want. It's got horn sounds. It's got a little storage bucket in the back to put some pucks or whatever you want. Uh, it's got, I mean, is this the coolest thing or what? Why do kids have all the fun? Dynamic boards? Don't love. My own personal electronic toy Zamboni to ride around in? Yeah, I'll take that. Thanks. The Rocket Booster segment this week where we get you updated on all the Laval Rocket news. Uh, we, next week when we come back for the show, we'll actually have our first Laval Rocket games to talk about. Talk a little bit about how the roster looks because remember, that development mandate is not just in the NHL. That's going to be in the AHL too. And so the Laval Rocket lineup is should look a lot different than it did last year. A, there's been a lot of turnover. B, there's a lot more prospects in the lineup. So we'll see just how J.F. Uhl deploys his players uh, coming up this weekend. They've got a home-and-home -home, uh, opening at Place Bell on Friday night with a visit from the Belleville Senators and then traveling to Belleville to face the Senators in their building. Both are at 7 p.m. What do you do if you're not, uh, if you're wanting to be watching the Habs game or you don't subscribe to AHL TV? You want to know what's going on? Well, you follow us at the AHL Report on Twitter. We will bring you live in-game coverage each and every game for the Laval Rocket. And then make sure you head over to AHLReport.com uh, and we'll have full game recaps just like we do at allhabs.net for the Canadians. We do the same thing for the Laval Rocket so that you can keep an eye on uh, the Habs prospects as they continue their journey at the AHL level. Uh, Alex Belzeal announced this week as the third Laval Rocket franchise captain. Of course, he's replacing Xavier Ouellette, who left uh, the, the organization in free agency over the summer. Uh, of course, the first captain in Laval franchise history, which a lot of people tend to forget, was Byron Fraze. And Byron Fraze did an admirable job in his inaugural season as the very first captain in Laval Rocket history. Uh, he was a stand-up guy on and off the ice uh, and is still continuing his journey in the AHL just out in the Western Conference. So uh, congratulations to Alex Belzeal on being named the third captain in history. Um, I'm hoping that with the C on his chest, maybe, maybe he'll take a few less bad penalties at key moments in games. I'm hoping. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Uh, the other thing to watch out really for Laval this week is what they're going to do with Philip Meshar. We know that Philip Meshar was cut from the NHL training camp, sent to the AHL. We talked last week about how now the decision has to be made. Will he stay in the AHL or will he be sent to the OHL? The way Kent Hughes made things sound at his press conference uh, yesterday, it's sounding like they're likely going to send him to the OHL, which it's not the path that perhaps I would like to see, but hopefully uh, Philip Meshar can go down there uh, and if he is sent, sent, sent to the OHL and dominate, and who knows, maybe he makes the NHL lineup out of next training camp, which would be pretty exciting to see. <music> 
Habs Fan Hub is a fun place to be, as always. And don't forget, uh, this week's feedback forum question is, uh, what is, now that the season has started, do you have a game day routine? Love to hear that. Drop it in the comments down below. Next week, we'll read those right here on the show and react to them as well. Like the Gallant family at the top of the show, if you're going to be at a game, if you're going to be out at a pub with your friends, if you've got a really cool setup in your in your entertainment room at home to watch Habs games, whatever it is, post your photo that's Habs related on Twitter or Facebook. Use the hashtag show your Habs will feature you right here on the show. My question last week was, has your expectations for the Montreal Canadiens season changed from the start of training camp before the preseason exhibition games were played? We have Dave saying my expectations have changed since preseason began. Uh, With the amount of experienced forwards on the Habs roster, I naively thought offensively they would be okay, but I miscalculated the experience on the back end would have an adverse effect on the offense, as we can see in the preseason games. Uh, That is true, Dave. Thankfully, we saw that offense wasn't as much of a problem uh, in the first game. Now we'll have to see if that continues through subsequent games. Center Heist says, Uh, As far as the season, it's going to be more entertaining this year with the kids, for sure. We're going to get killed, but the kids will be gaining experience and we can already see the change in culture happening. As I said in the first segment, we're not expecting them to come out with a ton of wins this year, but I think it could be entertaining hockey. We even said that in the preseason, that the games themselves might be really fun to watch, even if it doesn't end in a win. And I think that's a great uh, outlook and attitude to have going into the start of a rebuild. James Snedden saying that that his outlook on the Hab season has not changed. We know we're in for a tough year. Finishing 32nd means you can only go up. Look at that silver lining on that cloud, James. I love it. It's going to take a couple of years to overhaul the roster, so we have to be patient. And I agree with you. I agree with you. Preseason is in the books. We want to see development. We want to see progress in young players. We want to see veterans uh, stepping up to the plate both on the ice and in their mentorship of younger players. And we're hoping that we see some growth of for the exper- for the inexperienced coaches behind the bench as well. So it's going to be a fun season. We are just getting started. If you missed last week's show, why don't you check it out right here? We'll be back next Thursday with another fun episode of Habs Hockey Report. Go Habs, go! Go Habs, go!